This channel is for educational purposes only. Uh, make sure you do your own due diligence before making any investments. Um, and there is inherent risk in trading. So it's speculative. Uh, just make sure you keep that in mind. Hey, this is Joe. We're going to do an update on the S&P and the QQQ. If I have time, I'll go through a couple other uh, indexes. Uh, not a whole lot changing, but one thing I can do this week is I want to uh, emphasize something fairly important when it comes to buying pullbacks or looking at pullbacks and using the two time frame approach that I have talked about uh, over and over again on this channel. So uh, I want to get into the S&P and then on the QQQ, I'm going to give you uh, a little bit more in-depth analysis on uh, when is a good time to buy pullbacks and when is not a good time to buy pullbacks? So uh, let's look at this. Uh, I've got the two time frames up weekly on the left and the uh, daily chart on the right. Um, so the spider is still, uh, I mean, this is the same. I'm, I'm giving off the same basic analysis because nothing's really changed in several months. We've been working sideways. But there's no change in the slope of the moving averages. There's no change in volatility. Volatility continues to be pretty low overall. Um, the only thing that's happening is we're pushing up and we're sort of hitting new highs here. And yet the momentum uh, signs are really not very good. I mean, MACD is pretty weak on the, on the weekly chart. The ADX continues to drop. And then if we go and we look at what Price is doing, price has made a higher high, pullback, higher low, higher high on the daily chart and ADX is going nowhere. So this isn't a dynamic trend. With that said, I mean, I think at this point, I, you, you probably should realize that, uh, you know, the market can continue to push higher even though the momentum conditions aren't that great. Because really, we haven't had any power in the trend in quite some time. Now, one of the things that you could do is you could look at what's taking place with the MACD. And MACD, even though this was working higher, it was sort of trending lower, but it's never taken out the zero line. So if, if we're looking at um, this as being the zero line, when you get in this kind of mode where it's sort of an irregular uptrend, where we're going higher on the daily chart, but it's just not really strong, you kind of want to watch this zero line until we see a move where um, this actually drops down below the zero line. In fact, I'd probably like to see both lines drop down below the zero line. We're probably going to continue to do this kind of sloppy upward move. Um, Price matters more to me than the, than the uh, indicators. We use indicators to confirm price. So if I look at this, we made a, a low here. We made another low here, another low here, another low here, here, here. These were lows. That was lows. Notice how every one of these are higher. We continue to make higher bottoms along the way until that changes. You, you just better have an upward bias. Now, I've been trying to keep it simple and just say, you know, as long as we've got parallel line look here, just be bullish um, and look for pullbacks to the 18 week. What, what kind of bothers me a little bit is that we didn't actually get the full pullback this time. Normally, we'll get these pullbacks and we haven't had that in this instance. So if, if this keeps pushing higher, we're probably gonna get into a situation where it's getting stretched away and that creates a little bit more risk. Uh, again, the other option is that we start to see a lot more volatility come through. Let's look at the cues. So if we look at the weekly chart, again, momentum really hasn't been that good, but if we were to evaluate the signals in this move, we had this, obviously, this major V bottom when the market crashed, the market turned. But then look, we had um, pullback here, it's kind of turned into a little double bottom, um, but that was a pretty solid pullback with the rising moving average environment. And if you go back to my video on the moving average setup, the two time frame moving average setup, um, we can see that at this point back here, was an opposing trend pattern and it triggered you in and then it wouldn't have taken you out if you had to stop down here and then you moved higher. So um, that's sort of that's sort of one signal right there. So that's the that's one pullback trade. And again, I like to take the first two. So the second one is right here. Now, 
if we look at this, so we make this peak here and we make this peak here. Those are both confirmed by MACD and ADX. And even this one, um, not quite as strong because it didn't make a new high, but it was above the signal line and, and, and the ADX was still very strong at this point. So I'd have been willing to play these two pullbacks. Now, if we look at what's taken place recently, this last move, we went to a new high here and MACD didn't even come close. And then look at what the ADX was doing. So we had, you know, pretty strong divergence in both these indicators. I don't want to play this pullback. Now, obviously, this has made a good run. But again, I always like to play the percentages. And I don't see this as being really a good percentage play. Uh, it, you know, even though the 18 was above the 40 and both lines rising, and we had a, a good opposing trend pattern on this time frame, um, I probably wouldn't have taken it based on this divergence setup and the fact that the ADX was really weak. So I'm willing to miss that. I like to play the first two, especially if momentum is decent. And then after that, I like to be a little bit more, uh, you know, picky. Uh, and I would go find a stock. So based on what this is doing, I might go find an individual stock that has the criteria that I'm looking for and has good ADX and play that. Um, but probably would have passed on this signal. One thing I would suggest you do though, every time you get a pullback to the 18, in your mind, I want you to play this game where you figure out what the entry is. So in this situation, you had the break of the downtrend line and then you came back and tested. And then as you work your way back up here, you had uh, MACD come up and hold the signal line. So I probably would have, my entry would have been right about here on this setup. And then on this one, I would have looked at a break of the trend line, uh, a move up, a test of this price here. And then on the, this bar here, let me clear this out. Um, this bar right here would have been my entry. So that's sort of the three uh, coming up back through the 40 after the test of the 18 with the MACD holding here. So this is the type of thing I think you want to get better at. Even if you're not interested in playing this as a trade, get good at seeing the signals. Draw your trend lines in. Draw, look for the test. Look for the one, two, three patterns and see if you can find where the good entry is. If you can learn how to do that, the stock picking part is not as difficult as this part. This is all about uh, execution and uh, understanding uh, the, the, the signals and the, uh, and the uh, trigger patterns and stuff like that. Get good at the triggers, and then you can always back into understanding what are the good trades. And it's a, a lot of that has to do with how much work you do. If you put a lot of work in, you can find plenty of, of ideas, but you have to learn this trigger the, the, there's a different trigger on every pullback. It's not the same every time. If it were the same every time, it, this would be pretty easy in terms of trading. But because it's different and every pullback and every setup is a little bit different, you have to go through and keep practicing and do it on sim. Do it. Use a simulator if you have to. Uh, if you don't have the money, that's okay. You can practice using simulator and you can do a lot of trades in the simulator. If you can't make money on the simulator, you should not be trading in real, with real money. So anyway, uh, that's the update for the week. Um, let's uh, uh, hit the uh, like button for me and we'll uh, see you next time.